Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. There is a huge and widening gap between reality and how the Chinese dictatorship presents reality. With the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party approaching in July and China's dictator Xi Jinping needing an endless run of victories to secure his position in advance of next year's regime reshuffle, the state's propaganda machine has gone into overdrive. Likewise, the grotesque personality cult that has been built around Xi has reached new heights. In February, the People's Daily mentioned Xi's name 139 times in one article celebrating China's complete victory in eradicating poverty. As we shall show, Xi's anti-poverty campaign is yet another triumph of propaganda over reality. The extreme prickliness of Xi's regime is revealed by the latest topic to be banned by internet censors. The Chinese character for emerald began to spread as a form of protest by Chinese netizens because it can also be read as Xi dies twice. Xi faces multiple challenges at home and abroad. This is an unprecedented and possibly existential crisis for his regime and the CCP state. This is shown by a number of new policies and pronouncements relating to curbing financial risks, fast-tracking the creation of a fully modern military by the year 2027, and also Xi's overly complicated dual circulation strategy, which aims to boost China's consumer spending as a way to offset deglobalization and anti-China protectionist policies. Xi is also facing challenges from within the party state. The key issue is next year's 20th CCP Congress and Xi's aim to break with traditional power limits and extend his rule for a third term and beyond, as both CCP General Secretary and President. His plan is to be ruler for life. During his first term 2012 to 2017, Xi partly succeeded in quelling top-level factional power struggles by waging China's biggest ever anti-corruption sweep. Actually, this was a cover for a factionally targeted purge to eliminate his enemies and consolidate unprecedented power in Xi's hands. The Chinese regime morphed from one-party dictatorship into one-man dictatorship. But the CCP infighting has flared up again as a result of the crisis in society and in international relations. Today, this power struggle is the most severe since the period before and immediately after the 1989 Tiananmen massacre. While on present trends she will likely succeed in extending his rule, growing discontent and factional maneuvering in the upper reaches of the party state could force him into making compromise. The period after the 2022 Congress could see a different alignment of forces and a greater intra-CCP instability. Ultimately, conflicts within the ruling class reflect social processes and the rising tide of working class discontent. The lines of division inside the party state are not clearly defined or settled. They are not ultimately about political ideas, but about power. The CCP's top ranks are an assemblage of capitalist oligarchs controlling vast business empires. Within these layers, there is a growing pessimism that pretty much everything is going wrong. Some anti-Xi factions are uneasy with his ultra-nationalistic and imperial wolf warrior diplomacy used to strong-arm other governments, as shown by disputes with Australia, Canada, India, and Taiwan. This section of the ruling class would prefer a return to the more discreet and pragmatic hide-and-abide foreign policy doctrine of Deng Xiaoping as a means to de-escalate global tensions, especially with the US. Instead, like a frilled lizard puffing up its neck, Xi's regime exaggerates its economic strength and global capabilities, partly as a tool of diplomacy, but more importantly still to reinforce the aura of Han nationalist strong men that Xi Jinping needs in order to continue ruling. 
China's aggressive foreign policy over the disputed border with India, the escalation of military exercise in the Taiwan Strait and the South China Sea, the detention of two Canadian citizens in retaliation for Huawei heiress Meng Wanzhou's detention in Vancouver, these all serve a dual purpose to pressure foreign governments but also to feed the domestic propaganda machine. Another source of unease is the relentless increase in repression. This has been the most striking feature of Xi's rule. The anti-Xi factions are hardly wishy-washy liberals. None of them would balk at ordering police to crack down on street protests or workers' strikes. But Xi's brutal crackdowns in Hong Kong, Inner Mongolia, and especially Xinjiang, and his default position, which is to double down whenever his hardline policies meet resistance, these are becoming increasingly counterproductive. There is for at least four reasons. First, Vicious repression, which is in Xinjiang's case has reached the Orwellian levels, does not create stability, which is the stated aim. Ultimately, it is pushing China towards revolutionary explosions, and sections of the CCP hierarchy fear this. Hong Kong's mass democracy protests in 2019 gave a foretaste on a local scale of where China could be heading. Secondly, this gives Biden and other Western rulers ammunition with which to sway global public opinion and hide their Cold War strategies against China behind a narrative of human rights and democracy. Thirdly, the tyranny of Xi's regime has taken on a different character even compared with the past because it is also directed internally into monitoring and policing the CCP elite. Cai Xia, a former professor at the CCP's prestigious Central Party School, which is the incubator for future top officials, says China under Xi has entered an exquisite totalitarian era that has surpassed the totalitarianism of Mao and even Hitler. The use of advanced technology, strict surveillance enabled by big data, he can precisely monitor everyone. He can put you under 24 by 7 close surveillance, she told Radio Free Asia last October. Professor Tsai defected to the US in 2020. She is close to some of the CCP's princelings, aka China's red nobility, which forms the core of the capitalist class. This layer initially supported Xi, himself a princeling, but has become increasingly disaffected. Tsai claims that Xi's ruling faction called the Zhejiang faction, after the eastern province where many of its members built their careers, enjoys hardcore support from only around 10% of the CCP's officialdom at middle and higher level. The majority are unwilling to openly oppose Xi at his stage, but their support is passive, she says. While her account of the internal balance of forces may be exaggerated for factional purposes, other important developments confirm the existence of widespread but muted or passive-aggressive dissent at various levels of the party state. The clearest expression of this is the increasingly open power struggle between Xi and Li Keqiang, the premier. State media controlled by Xi's faction have been censored the premier's speeches, something unseen since the Cultural Revolution of the 1960s. Since taking office alongside Xi in 2012, Li has kept a low profile, but in the past year he has become the mouthpiece of internal CCP dissent, dropping a number of media bombshells that constitute indirect criticism of Xi's policies. This was the case at the end of last year's National People's Congress in May, when Li announced to the media that 600 Chinese, 43 percent of the population, earned no more than 150 U.S. dollars per month. This was a reality check and a side swipe at the overblown poverty eradication campaign that bears Xi's official stamp. Professor Cai Xia's testimony is revealing. Other than Xi's clan, we all know we cannot keep going like this. 
she told RFA. Despite his growing unpopularity, Tsai acknowledges that Xi Jinping cannot be removed by normal means. Maybe an emergency of some sort or an unexpected accident could trigger explosive changes, is her conclusion. A fourth cause of ferment is that Xi's extreme police state measures have the effect of incapacitating the regime's ability to predict and deal with new crises. This was shown with devastating worldwide repercussions when the coronavirus outbreak began in Wuhan. Despite a subsequent cover-up, the truth is that during the crucial weeks leading up to January 20, 2020, Xi's regime was blindsided by the party state's obsession with secrecy and the actions of its security apparatus, which with brutal efficiency stamped on every attempt to sound the alarm. The 100th anniversary of the CCP will see a Niagara of nationalist propaganda to drum home the message that without the CCP dictatorship, China is lost. But there is another side to the celebrations. They will be hijacked by Xi's faction as a weapon in the internal power struggle. The personality cult will reach new levels to cement Xi's status as the greatest leader since Mao. This is designed to ensure there are no slips before next year's 20th Congress and Xi's coronation for a third term. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly.